Hi everyone, hope you're all well out there. Please forgive the hum in the background, I've got the heater going here. Um, I think the temperature here at the moment is about seven or eight degrees, believe it or not. Um, this week, we're going to be doing another bowl. And um, no particular reason for doing a bowl other than using a technique that I've used before in another video. But I had a suggestion about a little change to that. So um, I'm just going to try it out. thought it was worthwhile making a video about it. So I hope it gives you some inspiration and I hope you uh, um, can get something out of it as far as the technique. Now I know I've been saying this every video, but believe me, I sincerely mean it when I say thank you for all your support. Um, I really do appreciate that. And if you like this one, don't forget, give me that thumbs up, um, share the video around, subscribe if you want to turn on your notifications so you can uh, get um, notified when there's a new video out and there is a thanks button down the bot bottom that'll help support the channel as well and i must thank everyone that has already used that thanks button so let's get on and make this bowl and as usual first thing design materials and equipment so we're making a bowl today and this is the mold we're going to use. It's quite a large mold. As you can see, it's uh, around 140 in radius. So we first of all got to make up a disc to meet, or should say, to fit that. I'm going to use this former to make our disc, which is the same one we use for the uh, drop bars. And now I've added in another little extension just here. Now these are the colours we're going to use. Um, the bottom one here is 1409, which is light bronze. Then we've got 0301, which is pink. 0110 caramel and 0108, which is powder blue. The uh, light bronze will be cut into a circle and that will go on the base. And then from these three here, I'm going to cut the um, three by three squares and tack fuse them all together into little blocks. And then they'll be placed on top of the light bronze and fused up so they'll all melt out and spread out and give us our pattern. Now to calculate how many little 3x3 three three squares we'll need of each colour, this is how I've done it. Hopefully I've got all that correct and uh, I don't have any problems. If it's not, well, we'll find out. As far as equipment is concerned, you will need a former to make the disc and a mould to make your bowl. Now, because the disc that I'll make will come out of this former a bit irregular, um, I am going to grind it to uh, get it nice and circular so you you will need something to do that grinding. I'll obviously use my flat lap, but um, it could be done on a number of things. It can be done on a belt sander, or you could even do it with uh, uh, good old diamond pads. If you haven't watched my channel before, I um, just need to let you know that all the glass I'm using is Bullseye 90 COE. And uh, when we do the disc in this former, I'll be putting thin fire down. Um, and lining the inside with a couple of mil of fiber paper and in the mold I'll be using boronitride spray as a separator. So if you don't use a 90 COE glass just make sure you adjust any schedules I give you to match your COE and your kiln. Don't forget your safety make sure you're wearing your safety glasses when you're cutting glass and grinding and so forth and when you're cleaning up thin fire or spray and boron nitride or anything like that make sure you're wearing a mask and make sure you're wearing a mask also when you're grinding even though it's underwater it's not 100 percent safe the uh, ground glass can aerolize into the air and you can still breathe it in so first thing i've got to do is cut a disc out of this which will be 140 centimeters in radius then we cut our little three by three squares out of these three colors I'll need an even quantity of each. 
Something I want to talk about here is basically to cover me because I may break this and that means I've got to change my base colour. Now this is only 2 mil glass and I've broken 2 mil glass on this before because it is, yeah, it's only thin so it's very sensitive. But one of the reasons is, is that this little pivot point that we use here when we put it on the grid here raises the centre of the glass off of the work surface. So it actually sits at a slight angle to the blade. So as this is going around, because it's sort of pivoted a bit, we can break it if it gets um, a little bit too much pressure on it. So I've got to be pretty careful and we'll see how it goes anyway. But And in case you haven't seen this done before, um, this little ring saw, you have a small plastic piece here that acts as a pivot point that fits within one of the holes here to match the diameter that we need, or we should say the radius that we need. And then once we find that, we can rotate it around to actually cut our disc. So let's give this a go and see how we go. Okay, so I just had to get my uh, safety gear off, or at least my mask off. The cut went fine, and we got a couple of little pieces broke off as we went around. That's these ones that have the, get it in the camera there, where it's thin on the sides. Um, that's not a problem. Um, everything's gone fine, we've got a one, it's all in one piece. <clears throat> now, i just got to get this off, and with the thin glass, Got to make sure I've got that flat down on the table to get this off because it can sometimes be a little tricky to get off. But anyway, I'll wash it up and then we'll get this off. So I just use a little blade I've got here to try and get under this to um, slowly take it off. So in this particular case, I want to keep this as flat as I can on the table and not put too much pressure on the glass itself. Um, usually it comes off all right. Sometimes it just takes a while to get it to release. And it's not something I like to force too much. But it's going to be stubborn today. There we go. Hey, so now we have a intact disc as our base.
Well, that took a little while to cut all those squares, but I finished it finally. Um, and I've laid this up. Now, I didn't video this, sorry, I forgot to put the video on, but it probably would have been quite boring. But anyway, what I've done here is I've got thin fire on the shelf, a couple of dams on either end, and then I've made up little, um, little blocks of those colours and I've alternated the colours so that there's two of each colour, or should say three of each colour on each block, and separate them all with a little bit of uh, thin fire to keep them apart. I will now tack fuse all these together so that they will uh, stay together in a nice block and they'll have a nice flat bottom so that we can set them up on that disc and do our final fuse down. So now I'll get this in the kiln and we'll do a tack fuse. So we've got all our little blocks fused up. Um, they went well, but I've made a mistake really. Um, I put them on edge so that I'd have a, a flat base for them to stand upright on. But because I had uh, quite a long row of them separated by little pieces of thin fire, what's happened is, is the gaps between each piece of glass, because they're not all, they don't all fit tight up against each other, there are little gaps, have accumulated over that distance. And they tend to have slumped to one side. If I'd made it shorter, we would have been better. And I think also if I dammed it up on the sides as well, that would have helped as well. But it's no big deal. Most of them sit upright. Some of them have got little leans on them. But I'm just going to grind the bottoms of those so that they sit upright. Because I really do want them upright. I don't want them on a lean because I'll tend to fall that way and then we'll get a large area of the pink. And I want a more um, striped pattern. So I want finer stripes, if you know what I mean, rather than large areas of, uh, of colour, if possible. So... I'll go and uh, grind all those up, then we'll uh, put them all on the base in the former and we'll do a full fuse. I've finished uh, grinding the bottoms of these little blocks so they sit upright or a little bit more upright at least and um, clean everything up. It's all set up now. I've got my former, I've got thin fire paper on the bottom, I've got um, fiber paper around the ring there. That's previously fired, so it's fairly fragile, but uh, that should be fine. Base piece, all the blocks upright, in a just a pattern I come up with as I was doing it. So I'm not aiming for any particular pattern. I'm just aiming for a nice, complex pattern across the piece, um, and preferably with finer stripes. So that's pretty much set up. Now I'll just get it in the kiln and we'll do a full fuse. Hi everyone, um, I think I've made a mistake. There's uh, obviously not enough glass in here for some reason or other, and yet I was sure I made all those calculations correct. But um, it has pulled in around the sides, and um, it's uh, unfortunately got three nice holes in it, and I have no idea why it's done that. Unless the glass cracked or something, but at the moment I can't really tell. Anyway, I'll show you inside the kiln while it's done. No, oh, they might be actually closing up. That could be interesting. This is the final result of our fuse. Um, it's worked out quite well, I think. Um, it's a little surprising. Those holes that um, I thought were going to be a problem actually closed up uh, quite nicely. So there was obviously, when I did the video before of in the kiln, uh, uh, enough thickness in the glass in the centre that it was then going to spread out as it become uh, more molten. Now, I think it is still a little bit short on glass. Um, a little bit more glass would have helped. But other than that, I'm actually uh, quite happy with it. The um, 
pattern isn't too bad. I would have liked a little bit finer lines than that. But um, it hasn't worked out too bad. You can see the underside here, what the underside looks like. Um, obviously the edges are very rough, so it's going to be quite a bit of uh, coal working on those. Um, and we've got hazing on the top, especially the reds, they tend to haze quite badly. Um, and it has been in the kiln for quite a while. So, the next bit is I have to get this as circular as possible by hand, which is usually what I do. I just get it on the flat lap and work my way around it. I did have a thought though, and I am going to give it a little try and see what happens, and that is how I cut um, circles on the uh, ring saw. I'm going to uh, find the center as best I can, stick on one of those little guides, and then get it as close to the omnidirectional blade and work my way around and see if I can clean up that edge a bit before I finally go onto the grinder. So um, that's the next bit. We'll try that and see what happens. So what I've done is I have uh, refined the circle and I did do that on the ring saw. I stuck a um, little guide on here and you'll see in the video how I went all the way around the edge with the ring saw. I went around several times um, just to refine that uh, circle. Then I, on the, um, on the lap, I ground the edges to get rid of all the saw marks. Again, put a very small bevel on the edges. And then I've sandblasted it. And I think it's going to be fine. There are a couple of little things on it where we had those holes that closed over. So it's left a little mark here, mark there, a couple of little marks. But I think uh, I'm going to do a fire polish in this, I think in the fire polish style. Um, close up if they don't it won't be too bad there are the holes which we always seem to get when I sandblast and some of those will close up um, I think it's going to look nice um, can't see it at the moment but when it's wet when I cleaned it all up it looked quite nice I'm gonna have a square edge hopefully um, that won't round over too much in the fire polish it's going to be interesting on the bottom. I'm going to have that pillow effect again. So, I'll just get that in the kiln now and we'll do a fire polish. There we go. It's all nicely polished. <coughs> Looks pretty good. We've still got those holes in the top there, but I'm not worried about those. The back's all polished. Well, as far as it can be polished when it's sitting on the shelf. So now I'll just get this in the uh, mould and into the kiln and we'll do the final slump. So what do you think? 
Do you like the colors? Um, do you like the shape? Do you like anything about it or not? Tell me in the comments. I'd really like to um, hear your feedback on this. I'm quite happy with it. There are a couple of things that um, could have been better and maybe I should have done better. Um, the holes, I weren't originally too worried about them, but in the final piece, they're a little distracting. So uh, maybe I should have uh, tried to fill those in with a bit of clear or something like that, or tried to match the color. Um, actually, problem I probably couldn't match the color because I don't have the frit to match it. Um, but I could have made the frit. So that's something that I could have done a little differently. Other than that, I think it's turned out really well. And um, yeah, that's going to go in the gallery as well. So, if you've got uh, any photos of anything you do, don't forget, go to the website, use a contact form there and send them to me and I'd love to feature them there. Also, if you've got any suggestions on any projects you'd like me to try, um, just uh, put it in the comments section below and um, or use the contact form on the website and I'll see whether I can give it a go. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it's given you some inspiration and some ideas and don't forget, there's a couple of suggested videos up the top up there. Subscribe button right there. Don't forget your notifications. And until the next video, I'll say bye for now.